Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Health and Social Care live Q&A session. Um, I'm joined by Carol, who is the Director of Curriculum, curriculum sorry, for that area. Um, and potentially we will have a couple of tutors joining us um, if they get their technical issues sorted out. Um, but I'm going to hand over to Carol now, who's just going to give us a bit of an overview of the course and the levels that we offer at Brooksby Melton College. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, we have a very strong and large health and social care department. We offer uh, levels two and three during our study programmes. Our level two qualification um, entry requirements regard, um, need you to ascertain uh, full GCSEs um, at grade threes. Ideally, we would like at least one of those in maths and English. Um, and then alongside our study programmes, you would be able to continue to complete your maths and English elements with us. Um, a study programme is what all of our courses are geared around at Brooks Mountain College. And those study programmes incorporate your main qualifications at level twos and threes. Your maths and English, if you need to continue them with us, as well as work experience and placements, tutorials where we talk about the, the broader um, arrangements around making you employment ready, um, as well as all of the pastoral side of things. Um, and then also you have a study skills slot as well, where we help you academically to write your assignments and to get uh, industry ready for those in, um, interviews and, and parts like that. Our level two health and social care um, is a one year course. It has eight units in it. Most of them are mandatory units and that incorporates things like growth and development, working in health and social care, communication, equality and diversity, safeguarding, um, creative activities to do in health and social care and nutrition and health, just to name a few of them. Um, and um, alongside that also I mentioned we have some placement hours. You'll be in college for three days a week and that is where you'll have your main your main qualification in your PCSEs and then on one day of the week um, you would be out in placement and those placements um, go you know, across the whole industry. So if you're unsure which element you would like to work in you can go into nurseries, you can go into schools, you can go into youth work, you can go into health and social care residents community hospitals um, ideally we would like you to start thinking about your placement opportunities now you have to do 75 hours at level at 35 hours sorry at level two and therefore start having a look around at where you would like to go um, and then we ask for you to submit those ideas to us and we will help you to set up those um that's with the providers and then you can come um, and start your placements at the same time at cost would uh, incorporate a, a uniform so all of our students um, out in placement wear a, a uniform a polo shirt that's got a logo on and says that you're health and social care students that's for insurance purposes and also that everybody is aware that you're a student there um, our placements are incorporate you being a staff member so really good employability skills working together teamwork and um, again makes you um, perfect for the industry um, and that's the level two course. The level three course um, is a two year course, but it is broken down into two one year courses. So you have the opportunity to go on to the certificate in the first year. Again, a similar range of units, um, but it also includes uh, psychology and physiology um, and uh, working in health and social care, reflective practice, safeguarding, again just to name a name a few um alongside communication and equality and diversity for a level three certificate you would need to um complete 75 hours out in placement and again same opportunities for those placements um, at the end of that year you would be able to either go into work and go into industry and get those jobs or if you come out with a higher grade then you would be offered the opportunity go on and do the second year. Now the second year is called the extended diploma um, and this is where you really do rack up the UCAS opportunity points 
Um, and if you are thinking of going on to um, higher education, then um, the second year is really where you would need to go. Uh, within the second year, again, an extension uh, of the units. Um, so we sequence your skills and your knowledge and your behaviours. Um, and um, you build in the extended diploma. Um, across year three qualifications, assessments are completed through internal marked assignments, and they're up to 5,000 words, and they're all graded from a D grade to an A star. Um, the higher the grade, then the um, higher your overall grade would be at the end of your, that first year or the second year. And again, your UPS points tally um, obviously goes with it. Most universities, and depending where you would like to go and uh, which pathway, um, are looking for a minimum of a overall B grade at the end of the year. Some universities actually are looking for A's or A stars, but it is the equivalent of a three A levels. Um, so um, we help you with your um, personal statements and getting you ready for that HE world, if that is a world that you would like to go into. That said, it isn't for everybody, so um, we also help you with the employability and getting you um, out in those jobs. We do find an awful lot of our students do either go to university or um, land jobs in the placements where they have been um, doing some work experience. So those employability and that communication um, with those employees is crucial. We enrich all of our um, courses and all of our units by offering um, enrichment activities. Clearly at the moment under COVID-19, they've been a little bit restricted to some of the specialists coming in and doing guest lecturers. However, many lecturers um, have invited them in and they've done something similar to, to what we've done here with you today over Teams. So they Teams in and they um, talk about what their jobs are. The health and social care sector is huge and there are so many different opportunities um, in the in the line of work for, for where you would like to go. So you can go into your nursing and your um, paramedics and your midwifery and all of that side of things. You can go into management, you can go in, in uh, the care se section to be a carer. You can also transfer those skills um, so into customer service and that side of things as well. So the pathway is huge. And we've also had students, well, had student one last student last year and a student the year before that's actually gone into um, criminology, um, as well as all the mental health sectors um, that we have um, in the UK today. Uh, this, whole, uh, this qualification also would allow you to work abroad. Um, so again, a past um, student has actually um, worked on a cruise ship um, uh, as a, a carer. Um, um, so yeah, endless opportunities. Lovely, thank you, Carol. I think that's a brilliant overview of what we can offer. <laughs> and you've prompted a few people to send some questions in. So um, the first one I'll go to, because you talked quite a lot about placement. Somebody's asked, can you help us find a placement? Yes, definitely. Um, you'll be in college three days a week um, on all level courses. Um, in the second year, one thing I didn't mention was in the second year of the level three course, it is 100 hours. So just to go back in level two, it's 35 hours. In level three, year one, it's 75 hours. And then in that final year, it, it's 100 hours. Um, as I say, we, we prefer you to find a placement close to home. We have placements across um, Leicestershire, uh, Lincolnshire and um, even Nottinghamshire because we have a lot of students come in from a variety of different places. Um, so ideally we'd like you to try and stay local um, in your placements. That isn't always obviously um, possible. So start having a good research now of where you think you'd like to go. And then um, in interviews and things like that, we will ask you where you would like to go and then we will help um, obviously clearly set that up. There is a need though for you to uh, make contact with those um, settings um, and then also go for interviews and inductions and all of that side of things because our settings do treat you like a member of staff. And as I said, many of our students actually get part time or um, employment with those settings, even while they're they're continuing with their with their education with us, and they they do work shifts um, obviously around your your um, college hours. 
Lovely, thank you. Um, and that leads on to another question. What hours are we in college and is it full time? OK, so yes, it is classed as full time, but full time in an education world is anything over 12 hours. Um, so you are in three, uh, three days a week. We teach from 9.30 in the morning till 4.30 at night. Um, if you are, and that includes your vocational, all the fabulous enrichment side of things, um, employability skills, and as well as your maths and English. Um, so there may be, if you already have your maths and English, um, and you're coming into us on a level three course straight away, that is the five GCSEs including maths and English that we would like, or you can progress from the level two with one maths or English and then go into the level three course straight away. Lovely, thank you. Um, someone was asked, if you apply for level three but do not achieve the grades, can you revert to level two or should you apply for both levels? No, no, apply for apply for the course that you feel your GCSEs are, uh, are at that level, but it really does not matter on your application form. So if you apply for a level two course and then you get the re entry requirements for the level three, um, in that enrolment and induction process, then we will make sure you'll be given that choice of which course you would like to go on um, and we will enrol you on the correct level. At the same time, if your predicted grade are that you'll look like you're going on to the level three course, but sadly you don't make it again on that enrolment day and in that induction process, we'll um, come into college, come and talk to us, and again, we'll advise you on the correct way and the correct course where you can go, and therefore it's going to take you to Hi. Um, seems like oh, Jenny. If you Sorry. apply for a level two course and you don't quite hit those entry requirements, please, please come in and see us. And then again, we can offer you support and advice um, and see how we can get you um, on the right courses. Lovely, thank you. Um, we've been joined by Jenny, one of our lecturers. Um, so Jenny, we're just going through a few questions that people have asked us about health and social care this morning. Um, I'll ask Carol the next one and then perhaps I'll go to you for the one after that. Um, <laughs> Let you settle in, Jen. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we have been talking about this too, Carol, but can you organise placements within a midwifery department in a hospital? Yes, definitely. If, um, if you have links to those um, sections, then yes, definitely. And we welcome, we welcome obviously, um, any opportunities that we, we have. Um, we have got lots of links with Leicestershire Trust and their hospitals and um, it's great that they are taking our students um, for their for their settings, for their for their placement hours. So definitely yes, if you have got links or a preferred choice where you would like to go, then we will support you uh, and do everything we can to get you in there. And it is hard sometimes to get onto hospital wards for obvious reasons, um, but yes, we, we will try for sure. Do you mind if I just add to that at a moment? Yeah, of um, course. Yeah. Last year we had a student who was able to source a private midwifery centre in Hinkley. Um, so that might be an option as well, looking at the locality. I'm not sure where the students are from, but that's also an option in the private sector. Thank you, Jenny. Um, I'll ask the next one for you then while you're on. Um, do I need prior work experience to starting the course? Not necessarily, no. You know, they get the experience within the placement. I mean, obviously, if somebody's already working in the sector, that's an added bonus. Um, being able to contextualise from practice back to theory, but it's not necessary to come onto the course. As long as they've got the entry criteria, um, we would welcome students and support them with the work placement. Lovely. Um, somebody's asked, I have an educational healthcare plan, is there additional help? Definitely, yes. So we will help with the transition into the college and we have a separate L ALS team um, that will help you to um, transfer over. All of your healthcare needs that are on your EHCP plan will be transferred into the college as well. And we will ensure that the correct support um, is there and um, we will work alongside obviously your needs um, and also help you to become more independent as well, ready, ready for that um, next stage in your either your career or in your education um, pathway. Lovely. Um, I'll ask 
the next one to Jenny. Um, do you offer apprenticeships? We do. Um, we do the work based learning element. Um, you know, some of the students are already in a workplace and then we can support them through the work based learning journey. We can also sometimes, you know, offer um, local workplaces that might be looking for apprenticeships or looking to take staff on and to do the work based learning element. Um, within that area, there are various levels to go through and it just depend on the actual job that that student um, will either gain or is currently in. But we can also offer advice and guidance with that as well. Yeah. We do. We do offer. We do offer um work based learning uh, levels four and five in going right the way up into yeah. um, management so sometimes we have students join us in an fe world and they do the level two or level three and then when they've completed that then they find um employment and then they will come back to us and yes. complete their level four and their level five yes. on an apprenticeship route um so yes and that's a great alternative to going to university, isn't it? Because you, yes. you are in the workplace getting getting that experience and getting paid for it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And those levels run from level two to five yes. solely in the workplace. Or you can have, as I say, a combination of both. And some students start with us in the September um, on an FE course, go into placement and then there is a job opportunity. And then we can transfer them whilst in uh, education, which is fantastic because the work that they've completed um, on their study programme can also then be cross-referenced and mapped across um, into their apprenticeship standards. So therefore they're not missing any of the times. So uh, yeah, we've got lots of flexibility um, depending on which route learners prefer to go. Lovely. Um, and I'll just stick with you one second, but are you able to let us have links or details to where previous students have gained placements? Yes, yes. There's an, a you know we've got lots of links within local within the Leicestershire area and even beyond in some cases we have lots of very good relationships with settings what do take students and sometimes even ring and ask for students so we can support if needed and um, we've got very good links with local areas yeah I would say don't let it don't let the fact you've got to get a placement put you off at all no right? no <laughs> we can always support not a problem yeah definitely thank you um Jenny, somebody's asked, do I have to do the level two before I do the level three? It all depends on the entry criteria. Um, you know, sometimes students will come to us and they can go straight to a level three because they've got the entry criteria with the passes at GCSE. I believe it's five. Um, sometimes I might need to do the level two first, but ultimately we'll support them through whichever the journey is, um, but not necessarily have to do the two, no. Can I also add to that? Some of our students um, that may have had some difficulties, sometimes they do come into us with those five GCSEs, yeah. including maths and English, and therefore um, ideally would go on to the level three course. But some students feel um, the level three course is yeah. very demanding um, at a high academic level. It is the equivalent of the three A levels, and clearly you can go on to the higher education. So some students actually do have a, a word with us and um, between us, um, they do go actually onto the level two course just to put some of those confidence skills and um, just to put to to give them um, an extra year um, yes. to make some decisions and things like that. So all we say is just come in and talk to us and yes. we will make sure um, with the support that we can make sure that they go onto the right course for their personal needs at that time. Yes. Um, yeah, because going from school to college is a very different environment. And as, as Carol said, you, you are treated more like an adult. So that transition year would probably be very helpful for some students. Um, if you have any extra questions that you don't necessarily want to ask on this live feed, um, but you'd like to ask to Carol or Jenny afterwards, I'll put the email address in the in the chat box so you can um, contact them afterwards. Um, Jenny, another one for you. Um, what careers can I go into? So, um, well, over the years, there's been a, it's very broad and um, we've had students go on to do, you know, straight into employability. They've gone into care settings. We've had um, people going to the NHS as HCAs and sexual health clinics and things like that. We've also had students go to university. And again, it's so broad. We've had students do midwifery um, degrees, adult nursing, criminology and psychology, health, um, sorry, social work degrees, 
it is so so broad and that's the beauty of health and social care and um, there's many avenues and um, this is also why we, we encourage guest speakers to come in so they can also speak to students about you know the possibilities beyond the course and it is so broad um, but you know going back to the work-based learning question earlier I have one student in mind who did her level three with us she then went into a care setting and she is now actually the deputy manager so oh, she's wow. five. So she's done the whole journey with us from the FE to Workbase, and now doing the Registered Managers Award. So it's 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 lovely to see that journey, and it is possible. Anything is possible. Anything. Lovely. Thank you. Um, in terms of transport, if anybody lives a bit further away, um, I I suppose I can answer this one. Um, <laughs> give you guys a break. Um. If you are living a bit further away and you're wondering how you're going to get to college, we have really good transport links um, to all of our campuses. So the Melton campus where health and social care is based is in the town centre of Melton. So you can access any of the public transport links um, with those good buses and also train links as well. Um, we also have many buses that the college put on as well. So if you contact us at the course inquiries email address that I've put in the chat, we can put you in touch with the transport team and they'll be able to tell you exactly where the nearest stop is to where you live. Um, there's also bursaries and things like that available to help you um, with the cost of that too. Um, but our courses actually start slightly later in the morning to accommodate the fact that a lot of our students do come in from further afield. Um, so if you do live a bit further out, don't think that you'll be the only one travelling in. Um, that's relevant to a lot of people. Um, another one has come in that I can answer too. Um, what is the deadline to apply? Well, you can apply any time from now right up until August, September time if you want to. However, we wouldn't recommend waiting that long. Um, we recommend getting in the application as soon as you're ready to. Um, and getting it done before Easter at the latest really, just so we have lots of time to make sure that you can get your interview done um, and all the application can be sorted out fully before enrolment. Um, if you need any help with an application, our admissions team are available today. Um, so if you send an application or and you get a little bit stuck, um, again contact us on that course inquiries email address and they'll be able to help you with that. Um, once you've applied, you'll be invited in for um, an informal interview. Um, it's actually done over the phone at the moment or via Microsoft Teams. Um, and the tutors will have a chat with you about why you want to do the course and, and why it's the right course for you. And then um, hopefully you'll be offered a place and then invited to enrolment um, next September. Uh, we also have various sort of student welcome days throughout the year too, just so that we can keep in touch with you and uh, make sure everything um, is OK with you and you're still keen to do the course. Um, I think we touched on it earlier. Can I just add to that? Oh yeah, of course, Carol. Can yeah, I just go ahead. <laughs> yeah, can I just add to that when we were talking about um, applying? Health and social care is a very, very popular course. Yeah. So I would really encourage you to apply early and get those early interviews with us, um, because as um, as I said, we are inundated. Um, last year with um, high um, applications um, and therefore the earlier the better to get you through the system and therefore we can secure the place for you. Um, even it till the last moment unfortunately we, we did have a few disappointed students in the past because once our courses are full um, obviously we are space restricted at times. Average class size um, anywhere between 20 we, we average about 25 in, in a class um, and this year we have taken on, as I say, demand last year was huge and we've taken on two cohorts. Um, so, you know, we're looking at the first students um, to, to go into the, into the, into those into those classes. Um, so please don't miss out an opportunity um, you can still apply for the course and accept the course. And then if you change your mind later, then, then that's fine. But we will have a waiting list, I'm sure, um, as the year goes on. Yeah, you're, you're completely right there. It's, it's our most popular course at the Melton campus, actually. So yeah, get your application in um, soon if that's what you, you want to do or you think you might want to do. Um, we've had one more question I'll, I'll ask you, Carol. Um, can I do the level three course if I'm over 19? 
Definitely. Yes, you can. There is no age limit at all. Um, we have had students um, well within their 40s and I'm not even sure if she's not over 50. Yeah. Um, so not a problem at all. Um, yes, um, any age. Um, there are bursaries available for all students um, for, for course fees as well as help buying kits. We also have the adult learning and in some cases there, there may be some opportunities um, for course fees to be paid for the over 19s. They're on um, universal credit or some of the other uh, benefit schemes um, that we currently have in the UK. So there is lots of opportunity. We do have a, a bursary team and they fall under the student service team. So again, if you have any of those queries, please, um, I'm sure Alex will put all of the details onto the live chat and um, onto our website afterwards. Um, if you're in, un, if you're unsure though, please contact us directly, and um, you're likely to be put through to Jen or, or myself or one of the team, and then we can we can help you through the process. So please don't worry, don't, please don't worry that the support isn't there. But we can direct you and get you um, sorted early, get the application forms out for you for the bursary. Um, and again, as I say, there is bursary help out there for um, ICT at home, for uniform, for DBSs, for actual course fees if you're over 19 plus. There is a whole plethora um, of um, support and bursaries out there that um, we can help put you in the right place with the right people and certainly um, help this transition, um, obviously transport also a bursary for that, um, and help you with transferring obviously from your current situation, be it school or uh, employment if you're slightly older, um, into into the college life. Yeah, that's that's a really nice thing to touch on. Actually, I think uh, one thing that makes us really special as a college is that we're we're not a huge college, um, and so we are able to offer a, a better level of support and treat each individual student um, as their own special entity. So um, we can help you however however you need us to. Um, I think we've got time for just one more question. Um, how much does the uniform cost? Jenny, are you able to answer that one? <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure, Carol, do you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I didn't want to give the wrong cost. <laughs> so um, uniform cost, as I say, it's a polo shirt um, at the moment. And uh, last year they were seven pounds. Um, and then there is also a, um, they call it an egg, an egg suit, um, <laughs> like, um, jumper cum um, top which is obviously a little bit warmer That's, that second item is optional um, but just remember it is winter and we are all out in um, winter at placements um, and that's a little bit more that's 15 pounds but all of that can um, it comes through one company the kit list is on our website so again you can go into that company you order it online you pay for it online and then you have an option you can either have it delivered in one massive bulk at college and therefore you don't have to pay delivery or you can have it delivered to your home um, and then you've got everything so as i say um, trouser wise um normal black trousers i'll be honest they're cheaper to get off the high street um, than they would be from the supplier and obviously sensible shoes um, again cheaper to buy off the high street than it would be from the supplier so just the polo shirt and the jumper um, from the suppliers um, it is a requirement because then uh, as I said earlier it's for insurances um, obviously if you're already working in the health and social care sector and you have your own uniform you will not need to wear our uniform you stick to your normal working uniform and that's great if you are in sections um, and sector already because you can count those hours um, yes. for your placement hours so you don't have to do two. Yes. Going back to placement if you want to do a variety of placements mm -hmm. then, then again you have that option so if you're not too sure you can do so many hours in one placement and then move to a different placement within year or if you're on obviously um, so like with level two, you could potentially have three different placements over the duration with this and again and that will give you the variety um, and um, give you the broader skills and employability. Lovely, thank you. Um, we're going to have to end there. Um, I'll just, yeah, time for fly. That's fly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have put a link on how you can apply in the chat. Um, but if you are interested in applying today, um, just head over to the Virtual Open Day website 
um, and you'll see lots of links on there and um, continue to apply um, just a little bit of information that you have to fill out um, it does ask for your previous grades but if you are currently doing your GCSEs just put your predicted grades in there um, and as I mentioned earlier it can all be discussed at, at interview um, what grades you're expected to get and things like that so thank you very much everyone for joining us today and for all the questions and thank you to Carol and Jenny for helping me um, present this today and um, thank you very much bye, bye. 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 bye.